The Small Business Show, episode 207 for Wednesday, January 23rd, 2019. <music> Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that is by, for, and about small business owners. Sponsors for this episode include abbyconnect.com slash SPS and expressvpn.com slash SPS. We'll tell you all about those shortly here, here, where it's freezing cold in Durham, New Hampshire. <laughs> I'm Dave Hamilton. <laughs> And this is Shannon Jean coming to you from the West Coast, where it's about, I don't know, maybe close to 70. Yeah, <laughs> so, that sounds great. Yeah, That's yeah. Great. Well, you know, we, we, uh, there's some extra fees involved in that kind of weather out here. So uh, that is true. That <laughs> we is pay true. them one way or another. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's How right. are you doing out there besides being cold? Uh, yeah, you know, it's fine. It was, I think Good. it was seven today. So that was cool. Oh, yeah. that's not bad. That's yeah. not bad. That's, that's sure. a, dig that's a digit. <laughs> it's Fahrenheit. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. yeah. It's positive. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. That's good. Well, we're not going to let you belly ache too much. Uh, so, cause since we have a guest waiting in the wings and, you know, w we've talked about uh, on the show, you know, uh, over I mean, hundreds of times about all the different ways of starting a business, you know, and, and, you can start something from scratch. We talk about partnerships all the time. We talk about people buying business, selling businesses and everything. Um, but one thing we haven't really talked about was uh, franchising. Um, you know, how that process works if, for your own business, if you decided to franchise it, and maybe from the other perspective too, if you're going to, you know, buy uh, uh you know, buy one. So sure. uh, I'm really happy uh, today to have uh, Nick Diagnolo of Nexus Property Management and uh, for joining us. So thanks for being here today, Nick. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. So so Nick's going to educate us about the franchise business model and talk about how he's done it. And uh, let, let's get started with a little background about you, Nick. Back up before Nexus, what did you do before starting and, and how, why did you start a property management business? Sure. I I um the main reason I started a property management business is because I had been managing property that I purchased in college. You know, I did I managed my own property throughout college and then after. So I had experience doing it. Um I got out of high school and you know, dealt high stakes blackjack and went to school for nice. finance. And I, you know, I got my finance degree in 2009, which so that was kind of like having an expensive napkin at the time. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Right. I, right. So at that time I, I was playing, started playing, I quit my job because I was playing poker on the side throughout that period and was making more money playing poker. And I had rental property that I purchased, you know, like I said, in school. So a decade of experience there, played poker for a few years, got burnt out with that and was like, okay, I need to do something else. And I was like, I know how to manage property. Maybe I can get a property management job. So, you know, you go on the websites, you look at the job offerings and the, for the property manager makes, and I was like, oh, that's kind of gross. So <laughs> let, me, let me see what's actually in, entails to open a property management company and just kind of, you know, take a swing at it. And I, one day I walked into, uh, you know, now my, you know, my biggest competitor's office, but I walked into his office. Um, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess uh, I can say the name here, but it, you know, it's a real property management franchise. They're locally they're here in Providence, Rhode Island. And I, sure. you know, he actually, the owner actually sat down with me a little bit and was, gave me some tips and some pointers. And, um, you know, I went after it. I maxed out my credit cards, got the website going, got the licenses I needed, spent time on that and, um, went after it. And That's it awesome. Out. A couple of points. I, I like, I really think that a uh, high stakes blackjack and a finance degree go hand in hand. <laughs> That's a perfect, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, perfect combination. Uh, and then the other thing is I really want to, uh, you know, recognize and commend you for taking the step to walk into somebody, you know, that, you know, was going to become a competitor of yours and that they, you know, sat down and gave you some information. And I would, I, I think that's such a great thing to do that a lot of people don't do is, you know, when you're trying to get started, just walk in someplace or make a phone call and connect. Most people will, will share information it, with you, right? It's true. If it, if a potential yeah. new competitor, like if an existing business came, you know, CEO or whatever came to me and said, I want to pick your brain and be like, yeah, you know what? Mm, maybe buy me lunch first, you know, but yeah. if somebody new came in and said, 
I want to get into this business. Tell me what you know. It's like, I, I would love that. Right. I mean, it's, that's what we yeah. do on this show. Right. right. So, yep. yeah, don't think that people will turn you away. In fact, more, more often than not, they'll sit you down and, and a few hours later have given you all the secrets. So, yeah. So did yeah, he give very, you all the secrets? Cool. Was that? Did, I mean, he, he got me started. And, you know, good. he pointed me in the direction of software, which was huge, huge mm. leg up. Just even knowing that software existed, that would make sense. And which one and, you know, just some basic stuff like, oh, get a small office, you know, you, and then some ba- basic ideas, how we handled maintenance and, you know, some some of the things that he would manage and like condo management he didn't do. And I, you know, I remember tentatively being like, oh, you know, I'll do that if you get those calls and almost yeah. trying to make like an agreement with them. But yeah. it was it, it was very helpful. Yeah, awesome. that's really cool. Yeah, that, that, I just didn't want to, you know, let that go slip through because it's just so important. So you, so you start Nexus and. You know, was it always in your head that, hey, someday I'm going to franchise this thing and grow it? Or is it was it just something that came up later, uh, you know, after you had gotten things rolling? It was my plan, you know, day one. I really like, you know, I read like the E-Myth and all these books and you know, I was tr- nice. trying to learn about investing and, you know, <laughs> structuring a business and having exit plans and way to scale efficiently, stuff like that. And, and just my mindset from playing poker for a living is kind of when you, when you play poker, you have to look at a situation and with, you know, imperfect information and just make a decision and be able to replicate that on and on and on with all these different situations. So I figured in business, I would do the same thing and kind of come up with a, you know, essentially a plan where somebody else could replicate what I did because of those, you know, build a manual. So that's how I approached it from day one. Wow. That's really cool. I like that. And I like the analogy of the, you know, making decisions with limited information. Uh, we're back to the, to the cards here, but, uh, I, it's, it's a really interesting, uh, uh, way to look at it, you know, from the, from the poker aspect. Um, well, you okay, have to so, do that in, in business all day long. Yeah, you, I absolutely. mean, you're never going to have all, you're never going to know what the exact perfect right answer is before you make the decision. And at, to your point, you have to make the decision to, otherwise you're dead in the water. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That happens so often and just kind of went hand in hand my, you know, kind of the mindset. So that I was a big benefit I had, I guess. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. So when I think about franchises, you know, and, and I've had a, a bunch of small businesses and we've talked about franchising and trying to come up with things. And it's always something that has seemed like such a big headache to me, full of regulations, bureaucracy, uh, one, you know, is, is that per- perception correct? And then can you, can you kind of walk us through the step of how you, you know, uh, got to that point where you could begin, begin offering uh, Nexus property management franchises? Yeah, there's, I mean, the, uh, you know, you got the FDD, the franchise disclosure document. That's kind of like the, the federal regulated document you have to provide. And, you know, you have to have financials in there and they sample the agreement and there's all these these schedules and sections that you have to, you know, have the cost, the, how much it costs to open. And you have to literally, I found a consultant who was really good that helped me a lot with the process, but you know, that, that FDD is like a 400 page legal document. Oh, wow. And yeah. It's, see, it's, 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 <laughs> I've it's, seen it's, those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's serious. Uh, it's to the point where like, you know, sometimes we'll get like a prospect who like wants to open a franchise and I have to tell him like, Hey, I'm going to, I have to send you this document. Like, and sometimes they get intimidated and they're like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just, there's a lot. Well, maybe that's maybe that's a good thing, right? Where if they can't power through that, right, then you're kind of funneling, you know, weeding people out. Uh, Not a bad litmus test. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I had yeah. a guy who was like, ah, oh, you know, I don't know about the franchise model, you know, because I already sent them the, the uh, FDD. And then he's like, but I, you know, I'd be willing to pay you a percentage of the revenue and you teach me how to do it. I'm like, that's what that's for. That's <laughs> why it's here. <laughs> you that's, got it. You that's got legally, it. we're legally required to give you that for that type of arrangement. <laughs> yeah. It makes total, makes total sense. And so you mentioned you hired a consultant. I mean, is that uh, something that you'd recommend for anyone that's looking to franchise your business or explore the opportunities that may be there with franchising? Absolutely. And I don't, I don't know how you could ever do it without one, to be honest. I, I had to go line by line with him to really create that document. Nice. And, um, you know, and, and it's this, and the thing is the price ranges from that because are, are huge. So I was lucky to find a consultant that literally that's all he did was help people create franchises, you know, cause you could call attorneys who kind of are in the field and you could get, you know, you could get 200, $250,000 price tags on this yeah. process. 
know easily if you kind of take a take a misstep here or there. Yeah, sure. And that, that was going to lead me kind of my next question. Is there kind of a, I don't want to ask you specifics, but is there a price range that somebody, let's say, you know, a small business that wants to, you know, move into franchising, are they, are they price range you're looking at where, what their expectation can be uh, to get to the point where they can actually start offering them? What, what, what does it typically cost? Yeah, it's tough to say because yeah. you have to create a, you have to create an operations manual and that's mostly on you. Okay. So, if you have that or you've been working on that, that's that's a good amount of cost. Yeah, I had I had um one of one of the guys who works for me who does all of our, you know, writing of that type of stuff and policy writing and stuff. So, you know, you, you got labor there. Yeah. Um, and then the consultant, you know, those probably range between, you know, sometimes you have a franchise broker relationship consultant that'll come on a little cheaper, but they you have to sign the agreement uh, for them to sell the franchises. Later. I see. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would, you know, I'd try to stay away from that, but you know, you're probably looking at, you know, 50 to a hundred thousand for the consultant okay. and then whatever other legal fees on top and fees to create the manual and, you know, any infrastructure fees to set up your website. So however your, your business runs. Sure. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So, so you're walking into six figures here, no matter how you look at it and, and perhaps quite deeply into six figures if you don't already have all the sort of the materials ahead of time. So, yeah. Yep. 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 Makes sense. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's really excellent information. And, and I, and I get it, you know, there, you got to go through this process to be sure it's a valid, you know, concept of franchise, right? I mean, they want to make sure it's producing revenue and you've got all these operational things in place to where you hand it off to somebody, they can have a chance of success. Yeah. And then the other thing is it has to actually be unique. Like it yeah. has to, it has to make sense for somebody would ever buy it. So the consultant, the one that I actually chose, you know, that was the first part of the kind of the vetting process is he looked through my entire business and the processes and to see if it was even a franchisable concept. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause like when I thought of uh, when we first connected, I'm all, huh, property manager. That's an interesting, I'd never seen a franchise, you know, uh, opportunity like that. So they kind of vet the, the, the business model and see whether it's unique enough to, to get out there and be successful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he won't even take on the project. Uh, at least my consultant anyway. I yeah. Mean, if you, if you, and that's, you want to, you want to do that for your, your own, um, you know, cause if for some reason you did get somebody who would give you the, yeah, 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 let's start making this a franchise and it's not unique enough, or you don't have a business model that's tied up enough, or you offer enough value to a franchisee, then you spend all that money and you know, you're dead. Yeah. Not, it's not going to work. So, okay. So what you went through the process, how, how long did it take? Was it, you know, is this a year or more project or six months? I mean, yeah, you know. it probably took about you know, 16 months to, okay. you know, two years, something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. So a year or two to get it done. And, and I, I'm, I'm curious about, um, I mean, I see lots of franchises, uh, available. I'm curious about the type of, of person that's going to be successful, you know, like what makes a successful franchisee, you know, is it a typical small business owner, do you think, or, or, or have you found that it's a different type of person that you're really looking for? I mean, I, I think that would be, you know, a lot of that would depend on the model and you, what business you're offering. I know with mine, you know, it's really, you know, we have a, an ex school teacher, an ex poker mm. player and a former business owner running a Nexus office. You know? Yeah. So these, those personalities, and they're, they're all doing well. So I, what I could boil it down to, it's really an attitude, um, like a solution focus and like teachable person. I see. Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. That yeah, makes you got to so be able to follow yeah. someone else's formula and, and, and be successful that way. You can't be too much of a, a, a lone wolf, right. Or a rogue. Otherwise it's not going to work out. Yeah. So like if the, if somebody owned a property management business and they, and they wanted to open one, it probably would be a bad sign. Yeah. Cause they, you know, they're probably already set in, you know, inefficient yeah. practices and policies and stuff that, you know, now it's like, you know, we kind of working against it. Yep. Yeah. That makes sense. And you kind of that, you know, if you, I would imagine you have to conform, uh, you know, kind of to the plan, right. That that's what they're buying. The, the, this is how you do it and how it works and they, they can't veer too far from it. Right. I mean, uh, are they contractually obligated to follow these, you know, certain steps that are laid out in that, in the agreement? 
Yeah, there's a lot of laid out there. There is some leeway and, and a lot of flexibility based on local markets, you know, okay. as far as as far as pricing and and the local laws within terms of, you know, lease structure, agreement structure and eviction process, stuff like that changes. But the general the core business um, functions and and processes, you know, pretty much stay the same. I see. No, that, that makes sense. And and you're and you're still running if, what is an essentially a, a Nexus uh, franchise of your own, right? You're still yeah. managing properties in your local area, right? Yeah, in Pawtucket, okay. Rhode Island, where our headquarters is, uh, where you know where I started the business, we still have our Pawtucket office. All right, hey guys, I want to take a minute here and talk about our first sponsor, which is Abby Connect at abbyconnect.com slash SBS. This is a fantastic service that answers your phone for you. It sounds really simple, but think about this. How many businesses do you call where a human being answers the phone that sounds like they are at and work for the company that you just called? Very, very few. You want to leg up on your competition? Have someone answer your phone for you. But you don't want to have to pay somebody full time to do that. And Abby Connect knows that. That's why they built this service, right? All their staffers are in the U.S. They create a small, dedicated team assigned to your business that knows your business, learns your customized scenarios, and really sounds like they work for you because they do. You've trained them. All right, here's the deal. We want to help you impress your clients and customers with Abby Connect, and they have a special offer just for listeners of the Small Business Show. You get a no obligation free trial with Abby Connect at abbyconnect.com slash SBS. Plus, after your trial, you get 95 bucks off your first bill. So you can go to abbyconnect.com. That's A-B-B-Y connect.com slash SBS. Or you guessed it. You can call them at 833-ABBY-WOW and mention Small Business Show. You get the same deal, the same free trial, and then the same 95 bucks off your first bill. And I, and I would encourage you to, you know, do the, they'll do a sample call with you uh, and walk through that because it'll blow your mind how, how great they represent your business. And, you know, we've said it here on the show before, answering you, the phones can be a real competitive advantage for you. And uh, this is a great way to do it. It's totally true. Our thanks to yeah. Abby Connect for sponsoring this show. Our next sponsor is ExpressVPN, where at expressvpn.com slash SBS, you can sign up for what I am actually quite happy to say is my favorite VPN service that I've ever used. Now, why would you want a VPN and what does a VPN do? A VPN creates a secure tunnel between your computer or your iPhone or your iPad or your Android and the outside world. Now, why would you want this? Well, what happens if you're at a coffee shop? What happens if you're uh, on some Wi-Fi that you don't manage, right? You're in an airport, you're in a hotel, like I said, a coffee shop, but maybe you're uh, in the lobby of one of your customers, or maybe you're in the lobby of one of your competitors. <laughs> you don't want anyone sniffing and knowing where you're connecting potentially seeing the data that's going back and forth and your passwords and all of that stuff. You want privacy and that secure tunnel of a VPN provides that for you. And this is why you want express VPN because they are the simplest VPN I've ever used. You install an app on your phone or on your Mac or on your windows machine or whatever. And it's one click and it figures it all out and connects and then you're done. And it's super, super simple. You can put it on as many devices as you as you have, and you can have up to three of them online simultaneously. So it's really built for you, the traveler, the mobile person that's out there just doing stuff. And it costs less than seven bucks a month. And you get three months free with a one year package at expressvpn.com slash SBS. It's ExpressVPN, E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash SBS. Three months free with your one year package. They've got a 30 day money back guarantee. It's so cool. You've tried it, right, Shannon? Yeah, it's awesome. And, you know, we always talk about the flexibility of, and how you get to live a charmed life as a small business owner. Uh, you can be around. You're not tethered to your desk. And and this product allows you to be secure while you do that. So I mean, it's a big deal. And, it, and it's, you know, it, it, it's it's a 
couple of cups of coffee, maybe just one cup of coffee, <laughs> you know, cost and, or, or, you know, or a beer. And, and it's really just something you need to be uh, involved in. Check it out. ExpressVPN.com slash SBS. Our thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this episode. All right. Now, Shannon, bring us back to everything that Nick's got to tell us. So I, I spent some time looking at your website, um, and Nexus Property Management uh, dot com. I think it was, you know, and and I, I, one thing I really liked was how uh, all your pricing was up front. And you know, I, I jumped on some other property management sites and was looking around, and I I was I was always hit with this call us call us for a quote, it's enter crazy, your information, right? yeah, and <laughs> you know. How important has it been for you to capture customers? You know, I mean, is that a competitive advantage having your pricing up there? It's huge. And and it's actually started to where, because when I first started the business, I had to go on these websites and I had to call these companies to get the, the price. Yeah. I, I needed to know what I should charge and I couldn't find any prices listed in my area. So I was like, okay, whenever I do get established prices, I'm putting them right up. And that's what I did. And, you know, people love it. And, we get a lot of leads quickly like that to the point where now our competition, they're all, they've started doing it as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it totally makes sense. Cause if I had, you know, some property that I needed, you could just quickly get it. And I, you know, I respect that. I think it's really cool. It's yeah. Really there's, there's another aspect to that too, is it's transparency and kind of treating all your customers fair. Cause if, if the, w- the price isn't posted, then like that means that the company doesn't know how much to charge or they're yeah. charging people all different. So you don't know if you're, you you're don't know if you're getting deal. the best price. Yeah. 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 So it's no, crazy if you don't, if you don't list it, it's really crazy in my yeah, opinion. Cause, at, yeah. Cause you market. can then, invest, you know, each individual person, well, I got a massage it here, massage it there. You know, that, yeah, that, that's yeah, really a good bad point. Bad day at the casino. So the price went up today. You know? <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> or, a, or a bigger company, if you think they can get soaked, you know, they can pay more or this, you know, so yeah, I, I think that's great. Yeah. I, I really like that, uh, that concept. So also looking around on the site, I, I see, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on there that you have and um, new ideas. I mean, let, I'd like to talk about this rent for you concept you have up there and invest that you have up there. It's like, you know, I, again, t- just give us some background on those and how you've used those concepts to grow your business and make you stand out from others. Sure. So most of our competition, they want to, you know, they um, they want to manage single family rental homes, you know, and okay. You know, it's very easy and very little maintenance. Not much happens with them. But in this area, there's uh, it's densely populated. There's a lot of multifamilies and, you know, large apartment complexes. So you run into those and sometimes you have the owner who is just looking for a tenant and they're not that great at screening tenants or advertising vacancies. So that's where I came up with the rent for you service where we'll have that owner. They want to manage it themselves, but they just want... Uh. They want you to place the tenant. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. So they're trying to d- down, you know, uh, I know how to do this part, but I'm no good at this. So they can hire somebody to offset that weakness. Exactly. So we, we perform that service for them. Um, and that's, to be honest with you, most of the people who do that end up signing up for management eventually. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Cause they see how yeah. you can take their that's headaches great. away. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and now the end vest is even before that. So, you know, when I, when I started the company, it was, you know, after the downturn, the financial crisis. So a lot of people were stuck in properties and they were just, you know, or they bought properties wrong. Like they didn't, they didn't cash flow correctly, or they didn't know how to model the potential ROI and they got in some bad situations. So, sure. you know, and they're, they're trying to squeeze money where it's not, it doesn't exist. And uh, there's a lot of clients early on. So Envest is a service where we, we act as the buyer agent and we actually take our clients and find them profitable properties and take them from, from the, you know, the initial showing through the inspections, through the purchase and represent them the entire way. And then we manage it after the fact. So oh, it's really the full, nice. the full gamut of uh, real estate investing and they get put into good situations because obviously we have to manage it after. And so yeah. and we've, we've had a lot of success with that, especially recently with the market has gone up. So, you know, we have clients that bought multiple properties with me three years ago that sold them all and made a hundred thousand a clip on all, you know, wow. these, these yeah. multi-units, stuff like that. That's, that that's well, how smart way. is that yeah. though? Cause yeah, you're, you're essentially cultivating your next round of business. Like th- th- that's your business development right there is using these people that not using, but uh, you know, taking these people that have money that want to invest, you find them the property that you want to manage and it's a win, 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 right? That, I mean, it's, it's fantastic. It just, 
it fuels the model. It's a perpetual, yeah. you know, it's like a, it's like a closed loop model. And, yeah. and to, on the offset of that, as far as like, well, we'll work with investors to purchase, but we don't water down our services. We don't, if it's a first time home buyer, they're looking to buy their, a home that they want to live in. We don't do it. If you're right. looking to sell a, if you're looking to sell a property, we don't do it. I see. We only, we only specialize in, you know, finding profitable investments, yeah. managing them. That's it. That's it. No, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Cause it's it great. fits your model. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I, a I lot think- of our competition, they do the sales and you know, the first time buyers, they water it down and that's kind of how we got ahead of them. They just, they get capped out. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, well, you only have so much time, right? I mean, you can do all these things, but are they really going to fuel your business's success or are they going to be distractions? And it sounds like you figured out how to stay away from the distractions as best you can. That's smart, man. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they cannibalize their own model with a lot of that stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the other thing I like about it, too, is that I would imagine, you know, your company culture is uh, pretty creative. And, you know, when you're introducing and doing these kind of new things uh, to, to grow your business in other ways. And uh, I, I imagine that, it, you know, it's good for your team. It's good for your your people to be involved in these other processes instead of, hey, this is the same thing we do in and out every single day. You're able to now offer these other services. I think it's great. Oh, yeah. It adds on. We even have, um, and, you know, we have, I have a program for my employees that helps them purchase their first property. And then, you know, they get free management on the first four units type stuff. And one of my employees that came on early, he's now grown to be our biggest client. He's got 30 units. Wow. Yeah. That's killer. <laughs> yeah. That, what a great idea. And what a great opportunity, you know, uh, lifting everybody up that you're, that you're working with to help them as well. And it helps you. And, uh, uh that's really great. I, I, I commend you for that. It works well. Yeah. Yeah, Smart. for sure. So tell me what's the biggest challenge for you guys, um, for Nexus and, and what are you doing now to, you know, try to overcome that, that challenge that kind of the next step for you? Yeah. So the biggest, my, our biggest problem is, kind of educating landlords or owners that don't understand um, how much it actually is costing them to manage themselves or, and they say on the same aspect, trying to educate potential franchisees when they call up and they go, Oh, well, 25,000 for a franchise. I can just open my own business. It's like, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) sure. (laughs) Sure. You can, you can, (laughs) yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) but it's, it's like, you know, you know how many, you know, decisions that got, us to where we are over the last six years and how you have to be right on essentially all of them. <laughs> yeah, a, sure. You know, and you know, it's that so kind it's, of it, stuff. Yeah. So educating your, your clients and your franchisees and, and how, how do you guys, you know, what, what do you, how do you overcome that? Or how do you get that, you know, you have a process in place that helps uh, get through that with them? Well, it's hard. We, uh, we have actually, we created a tool on the website. That's kind of a, it's called a DIY cost calculator. So you can go on there and put how many units you have, what your, what, you know, what your salary is, how much your time is worth. Yeah. And then it'll tell you, Hey, this is how much you're paying. And this is how much it would cost to have Nexus manage your property. And if you're saving money or if you're losing money. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. We're going to have to link to that. And is it, is it, uh, localized? I mean, is it kind of thing where if I put that in California, real estate would just freak out or, uh, you know, is it, is it, work it, would, pretty much? it would still work essentially, um, based on the percentages because ah. the, the, you know, you'd have to put how much the rent is for each unit and then how I much your, your time is worth. So it would still work because it uses the, the average time to rent a unit is, you know, 50 hours. The average time spent managing a unit per year is 50 hours. So it uses those calculations. Oh, and that's killer. You know, the percentage for the management fee gives you a number. That's, that's great. I love this stuff. It's uh, a, yeah, it's so that's, smart. That's an awesome way. It really yeah, you're is. just it's right really up front about it all. Yeah. 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 That's true. You know, if, if you, you know, depending on what your time is worth and maybe, you, maybe it doesn't make sense. Right. But it, usually, yeah. it usually does. But it usually no, does. Well, great. and, and yeah. that's the thing is, you know, that, your product, I mean, you've you, not only have you been doing it forever, but you've really honed this down. So you know that this works and, and that people can be successful by partnering with you. And so it at some point, they're going to see the price. They're going to see what it's going to cost. You might as well show it to them right up front. It's like it's like my philosophy with job interviews. I talk money with people first. Like, are we in the ballpark with each oh, other? Yeah. Great. Now let's talk about whether or not you're a good fit here, but it it doesn't matter if you're a good fit and you need three times what I'm able to pay. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, let's get the money out of the way. And then we're not wondering about it. Now we can have a real conversation. I think it's great. 
I think it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, it, it helps a lot too, because if you, if you have the call for a quote thing, now you have to have somebody answering the phone for a, somebody who's not, a, they're not really a strong lead. Yeah. They're sniffing. Yeah. 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 So now That's you're right. kind of, you're kind of wasting, you know, bandwidth and yep. you know, that adds up into all those it little does. small mistakes that add up. Yeah, that's good. That's great. So talking about mistakes, uh, you know, one of the things we ask everybody who comes on the show um, is, is really what's their, what's their best mistake. And what I mean by that is, you know, cause we know mistakes that we learn so much from them. Uh, you know, what, what mistake has taught you the most as you've, you know, developed Nexus and rolled into this franchising? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I, I think my, my biggest mistake was, um, you know, hiring and firing. Uh, and the way I make mistakes there early on is multi- a bunch of different ways. But I remember when I first started, I was trying to look for somebody, you know, I was trying to hire for maintenance help and try to hire a maintenance director to help grow the company. And I was trying to look for somebody like my, my, my own age. Uh, I was 30 at the time. And that was a mistake. <laughs> Cause yeah. the, that's not, that's not the age group of the person you need at the, Uh, I didn't. And so I ended up, um, hiring, uh, a guy, he was almost 60 and more experience set to more experience. And, you know, it gave me authority in the maintenance room because he had the answers to all the stuff that I had no idea about. And it really helped out. And in the same aspect, hiring for skills is not as important as hiring for attitude. Yeah. I hear you on that one. So I've yeah. had, I've had yeah. people who, you know, the, you know, the guys can do anything, can do anything in the maintenance realm, but the thing is that the wrong attitude and it's, you know, it's almost like a bad locker room guy, if you want to call it kind of sure. takes morale down and causes friction with the team, but you can have a guy with a great attitude. And if he's willing to learn way better off for, it. and, and so that those mistakes in the firing firing is, uh, Generally, I always tell my franchisees too, like if you think you should fire the guy, you already should have done it. Definitely. Do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, it, listen to, to all of our <laughs> listeners, take the last like 150 seconds of this show and play it again, because I'm sitting here thinking, man, I wish I had heard this 15 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever it is. Yeah. I, I just like. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so tough. true. It's, yeah. but it's it hard. I, it's I probably hard did hear this 15 yeah. or 20 years ago, oh, but yeah. un- until you, until you make that mistake, it's really hard firing somebody. It sucks, but man, oh, it's brutal. It's, it's brutal. Yeah, it, is it brutal. should be. And it should be brutal. Right. Like yeah. if you, it, I think we said this in a recent episode, Shannon, if, if it feels good to you to fire people all the time, some people will feel good to fire. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> it, but generally speaking, no, it shouldn't feel good. So yeah, it's yeah, hard. Exactly. It's hard. Yeah. Gosh. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. So it, you may have just told us this, uh, uh, you know, with that, with that mistake, I'm not sure, but you know, we, we've got thousands of, of folks listening that are, that are small business owners owners or potential small business owners, you know, and if you could offer your single best piece of advice that you've learned, and maybe it was learned something you learned at the poker table versus, uh, you know, in, in, in the, in the business, but what would that, that single, you know, uh, bit of advice be for them? Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess it does make sense. Comes a little bit from poker, um, and the decision, you know, kind of making quick decisions and setting to those, but I would say the biggest piece of advice that I, I, I had a noticeable difference when I started doing it, when I was trying to grow the company and I was really, it was saying no. Oh. When you say no to somebody who's calling you up and trying to change your policy or make you move on price and you say no, it sets your authority. It sets that you've researched this situation, that you know what you're talking about and that you're fair with all of your clients and you're not you know, I'm, I'm used to say, no, that would be doing a disservice to all of my clients. That w- that was a phrase that I caught on early and I, I wasn't really adding units a ton, but as soon as I started saying no, they, as soon as I say it, they go, okay, what's the next step? How do I sign up? Oh, wow. That's really great. I like that. I really like that phrase, you know, that would be doing a, a disservice to all of my existing clients when somebody, especially trying to get you to change what you do or the way you do it. And, and, and I'll, I'll, we're huge uh, proponents of not, uh, coming off price points. Um, and it, uh, you know, I always say it's, you're looking for a person, not price. Um, so I think that's excellent advice. That's really cool. Uh, 
Well, Nick, I, I've learned a ton of stuff. I knew nothing and uh, not, you know, uh, about your business. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely have a good insight into how, how you make things happen. Uh, it's impressive. Um, what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about Nexus and to connect with you? Yeah, they could go to nexuspropertymanagement.com. They could give us a call, 888-NEXUS-55, or they could shoot me an email, nick at nexuspropertymanagement.com. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story and uh, keep in touch so you can check back in with us as you grow this franchise network. Right. Will do. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, awesome. man. Thank, thank you so you. much. This was a great one. Folks, yeah, you can always find fun. us at businessshow.co. Keep doing what you can to live that charmed life, and we'll see you next time. 